And at Clubman, they have the Sona CBI plane. I do something. And they are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. The Sona Gen single line. They're kind of like the scraper plane that you can reach out and have sat on the wall and find out the phone people. And such the personas are razor. Natural for shaving. Compared to the this guy. I have a few recordings
Sure. You keep saying high performance razor. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the metric. Blades. Okay. High performance or higher performance. The razor itself uh -huh. can be made in such a way as that it's relatively gentle or relatively aggressive just by the, the difference of the manufacturing of the, of the skin guards, of the, what's called the safety guard, uh, can be made so it exposes more of the blade to the skin or less of the blade to the skin. Okay, so there's, there's the blade, the cartridge, or pardon me, the, uh, the razor engineering. Then, blades can be made to many different specifications. Grindings, tolerances, coatings, you name it. I can show you, uh, in fact, one of my videos has uh, a shot of like, three or four different blades magnified several hundred times and you can actually see the differences. Some, particularly feather, are made to extremely tight, very aggressive tolerances where their, uh, their edge, the actual edge, is even thinner than, say, another blade. That makes it a higher performance blade that you have to be more careful with simply because if you want to think of it this way, it's not really true, but think of it as sharpness. Okay. There are some blades that, relatively speaking, are sharper than others. If you, it's not really that way, but let's just talk like that. So what I've got here, for example, is a relatively gentle razor with a relatively high performance blade. So it's gentle on my skin, but it's being cutting my face very efficiently. Okay. Now, again, a, a high, efficient, high efficiency blade may not be for everyone. Uh, a, a very aggressive razor may not be for everyone. So again, you, there's some interplay in it, trying to figure out what the, what the best combination is for you. Okay. okay. What blade are you using? I'm using a, actually a blade called an Iridium. They're out of, uh, they were out of Poland, and they are no longer being made, but I have a little stash that I <laughs> But I'm not going to go running out there to get one. Ah, you can hear it. Good. And I hope I don't make a mistake, otherwise a, a, big, uh, a big weight is going to come dropping on me. <laughs> All right, let's get to work here. Uh, I guess we've come down to the, uh, the meat of the matter of uh, me doing a demonstration shave, be going, going through the, the prep, the uh, actual shave with the concepts I've been talking about with beard reduction, blade angle, uh, a lot of the other uh, techniques. I'm, I'm Guess this will be kind of like a uh, flow of consciousness shave where I'll be talking as I'm shaving here, as I think of things. Um, and then we'll finish up and questions and answers and I can maybe show you specific things that, that you may be curious about and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. So uh, first of all, obviously before you shave, you want to prepare your face as I mentioned. You want to have a lot of water a lot of heat if possible. There are those that uh, kind of like a cold water shave, it can work in a lot of uh, instances. My personal preference is definitely warm. So, uh, yes, please. Uh, in this case, pardon me? Vanna. Vanna is giving me a hot towel. And I'm going to actually let it. Very hot towel. Excellent. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, take a brush that's been soaked, take out a good chunk of the water. I'm going to start out drier than normal. Give it a little spin here on this particular cream, which is New York Shaving Cream. Which brush is that? This is a Badger brush by uh, Crabtree and Evelyn. Uh, this particular one is no longer made. I got it a few years ago, but they still sell. <laughs> they still sell brushes. Which type of hair? This is badger hair, best, this is the best badger. There are, for those of you who start looking into brushes, you will soon discover that there are grades of badger hair, going from pure to uh, up to the very end is usually silver tip. The problem is, is that there is no standardization to the grading. So some person's best badger may be another one's 
silver tip the badger, and you're just kind of caught. There's not a whole lot you can do about it except educate yourself with the different brands and look at pictures and read a lot online to see uh, what comparisons can be made. Um, before the shave, uh, well, let me say this anyway. This is about as much lather cream as you will need. All this stuff is so concentrated because you're going to add water later is that this is it. A, a, a tub of shaving cream like this could last you six months if you wanted to. Minimum three, usually six for me. In fact, most of the time I don't even hardly finish it because I've got so many different things. And again, you want your face hot and wet so and clean. So an excellent time to do this is actually after, the shave, after a shower uh, when your face is clean anyway. Uh, be sure you run a lot of hot water over your face. If you use a uh, soap on your face in the shower, don't use a body bar please, on your face. Use uh, a glycerin or face bar on your face because you use a deodorant or body bar is going to strip off too much of the natural skin oils that will help lubricate and guide the, guide the razor. Obviously, I haven't just stepped out of the shower, so I'm going to do something that's uh, called barbershop prep uh, from uh, one of my videos, and it's basically doing a real quick lather, kind of a proto lather, and then applying a hot wet towel to my face and letting that sit there for a time to hydrate and soften the skin and hair. So, pardon me? Yeah, I will get into one here in a second. This one is uh, from New York Shave, New York Shaving Company. It's called Tonsorial. In fact, uh, take a if you want, take a whip, pass it around. Uh, I've got a number of other things as well. In fact, I'll pass these around too. Uh, a wide, wide variety of scents. If you're into like colognes or natural scents or spices or wood scents or. Uh, Scents that don't smell like your uh, deodorant or your axe stuff. Like uh, raspberries? Berries, yeah. But there are there are lines uh, that are excellent. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly lather. Just to get a soapy thing going, I'll take another, another hot towel now. Thank you. And all I'm going to do is set it to my face. Just like that. Just like a bar barber might. <laughs> this could take up to three minutes. And that is from a physician saying that. But for me, under my typical circumstances, it usually only takes me about a minute for this to fully work. How do you know? Hmm? How do you know what it's worth? Experimentation. Yep. Trial and error. <laughs> I started at three minutes, went down to two, still work. Went down to one, still work. Tried 30 seconds, didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the underlying skin is still probably warm enough to maintain the moistness. You're probably okay if you just want the comfort or want more heat. Dip your dip your towel back in some hot water and reapply. It's more the moisture in the towel that you're using. You're trying to get it into the hairs to swallow them. Right. Yeah, so and as I finish this, You'll notice I'm actually wiping this off. I'm actually basically wa washing my face at this point, as well as hydrating, just to get it clean. Thank you. And then I'll go ahead and start reapplying with my brush. And this could take a couple minutes itself, too, depending what kind of brush you have the softness or hardness content of the water, your skin type, a couple other <coughs> environmental factors. This could, this could take a couple minutes to do. 
Mark, can you talk about possibly using a mug or a bowl? Sure. I'm lathering on my face right now simply because it's it's easier in this venue to to gauge the size of the lather. For a long time, in fact, I still do in the winter. I will take a large bowl with high sides, high straight sides, and I will lather in the bowl instead of directly on my face. You'll be able to tell when the lather is ready is when you see soft peaks like cake batter that kind of yes. droop over. Thank you. What would you recommend for a beginner, face lathering or a bowl lathering? I generally suggest bowl lathering, but only from the perspective of learning what good lather looks like in a in a bowl rather than in a mirror. Also, the, the bowl lathering has the advantage of uh, if you've warmed the bowl previously, you get a nice warm lather. It feels really good, uh, particularly in the winter or when it gets cold, like right now. Uh, it, uh, it just feels the, the luxury of warm, fragrant lather is something that sucks people into the traditional shaving methodologies because you're in the morning you're kind of waking up and it's like oh here we go with the day again and you start whipping up that batter and applying it and it's like oh this smells so good <laughs> the day is going to be better I generally start off in a massaging motion we'll do this for about 30 seconds so every little hair is covered with with uh, lather and then I'll finish off with like a painting motion just to even things out. That's actually not a half bad lather right there, but I think it can be a little bit more water to it. You'd be surprised how much water a lather can take. And like I said earlier, water is what does the heavy lift, lifting in a, in a shape. That's really what does all the hard work. Everything else is in support of the water as far as I'm concerned. It's a good idea when you're starting, and if you happen to be in a, a different, a different uh, environment like I am right now, I'm going to keep this on my face for 30 seconds or so, let it kind of soak in and penetrate, uh, give it an extra little oomph before I start shaving because of the different uh, environmental factors going on here that are just different from what I usually shave. Also, I do want to mention that uh, a shave brush I use uh, I generally have a relatively short handle so I can grab the brush by the base of the hair rather than the handle itself. That way I can manipulate and support the, uh, the water inside the brush where it doesn't release too quickly. And I get more control over where I can apply it. Anybody smelling those other, uh, those other soaps and creams? What do you think so far? Stick is good. I forgot one to send her out too. Let me do this too. This one is one of the old school British brands called Trumper. This is Violet Shaving Cream. Violet? It's like you. No, it's one of the most manly scents you will ever come across. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. When you're uh, when you're down with the shave, do you, do you have a bowl? You can demonstrate like, what a good lather looks like in the bowl, so we can see it. Like, get a, get a, do you get have a, a so important wide, heavy things low? Bowl. Yeah, we'll, we'll try something. <laughs> we'll, we'll try something. Okay, I'm ready to start shaving myself. I'm going to uh, show you a few things here, kind of a stream of consciousness, as I was talking about. Uh, You'll notice if you, if you follow my shaving that I, I seem to have a, a routine to it. I'll shave a flat segment, go on to the next flat segment, go on to the next flat segment. And you'll notice I try very hard not to repeat strokes. So many people, very, very common, stroke, 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 stroke. You're going the same way because you still feel, uh, you're still feeling some kind of stubble there. Don't do it. Stroke, move on, stroke, move on. All you're doing is reducing the hair. You don't want to try and get everything done all at once. Just go ahead and reduce the hair. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you've got a, a cartridge razor, 
you definitely want to follow the grain of your hair, which in my case actually goes from this way to that way. But I've learned that using a DE razor, a single blade razor, don't do this with a cartridge, a single blade razor, you can cheat a little. And by cheat, I mean you can use your angle and pressure to its most effectiveness by going straight down regardless of the grain. Most people can do this. Some people can't when they get to their neck, but they find they can go straight up. So, try this. Try just going straight down using all your, all your, uh, not that dexterity, all your thinking, all your concentration to say angle and no pressure, angle and no pressure, angle and no pressure. So basically enough, enough pressure to keep it against the skin, but not so much to indent it? Exactly. That's precisely it. Mark, what razor was that again? This is called a Weishi razor. It's, they're out of, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a Chinese knockoff of a, of a 1960 to like 15 bucks. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't. No. Not at all. There's... In fact, Andy started with a Lord razor out of Egypt that was nine bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it works. It got a little more expensive. Yeah, the Wii I started with too. I still use it. You'll also notice that I'm saving my this middle area for last. This is the most difficult area for me. It's kind of the, the most uh, difficult, stubbly, uh, grainy, icky stuff, so I just leave it for last because I want the lather to get that every little second going on there. Can't you tell a lot by the sound of if you're using the right angle too? The Depending mouth. on the razor you can. Some are a lot better at that than others. The, the Weishi here is actually not a good razor for that. The Mercours or Mercurs that you may see a Merker uh, Heavy Duty, exceptional for, uh, for audio feedback. Uh, you'll, you'll, if you read the wet shaving forums, and yes, there are discussion forums on the internet about shaving, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, you'll occasionally hear somebody talking about a singing razor. That's this kind of thing here. We're not doing any skin stretching. Let's talk about skin stretching for a second. In, with a straight razor, like what Jess uses, skin stretching is absolutely essential <coughs> because there is no skin guard, there is no uh, safety feature at all, so the angle and flatness is absolutely critical for a straight razor shape. With a DE and even more so in a uh, cartridge razor, it is less important because in the case of the DE, this, there's a skin guard uh, or a safety, they call it the safety bar. And in the case of cartridge razors, there are usually these little fins at the bottom. They're called skin pretensioners. They will actually do the job of, of uh, tensioning your skin for you. I like to say, don't stretch the skin, but you may want to flatten the skin. And by flatten, maybe that means bring it taut. But a lot of people make a huge mistake of yanking their face or yanking their skin way out of whack to shave, they'll get the, the smooth skin off of it, but then they'll find they, they're starting to get ingrown hairs. Don't have to do it like that. Just make sure it's flat and taut and do it that way and you'll be much more successful. Okay, so I finished my first pass just then. And if you recall seeing what I looked at, what I looked like before, you notice I've got a fair chunk of hair gone now. I mean, the, the bulk of the, I would say, the bulk of the stubble is, is removed. If you're learning this, you may want to actually repeat that. Do you, and if you're using a cartridge razor, you're doing your with the grain pass, you may want to repeat that as well. You want to repeat, or you want to reduce the amount of stubble on your face in the most comfortable possible way before you start getting more and more aggressive, if you will. Is that another topic? please? Does your uh, approach change depending upon how much growth you have? Um, if I was on a carpet razor, yes. Uh, I would definitely have multiple with grain passes uh, and uh, make, a, make a significantly 
more hydrated uh, lather by adding a couple drops of uh, either uh, glycerin that you might find in the grocery store or the drugstore, or combining soap and cream into what's called a super lather, and you get a really super uh, lubricating surface to work with. I'm going to just keep my face warm. Some people, you don't need to do a, like a full rinse, but it's nice to keep your face moist uh, just to keep that, that lather foundation in. Now I'll just go ahead and lather for my second pass. You'll notice that the lather is a tiny bit thinner now, which is good because you have less hair to work with. And of course, I'm talking here, it's, it's taking longer than usual. I, I've got, actually got a video about this too. You can do a, a traditional shave beginning to end in under 10 minutes. So as you're learning, yes, this may take a little longer than just waking up and, and absentmindedly swiping at your face with a cartridge and goo. But on the other hand, with a little bit of practice, you can get this under 10 minutes without a problem. And it's a pleasant 10 minutes. You don't mind doing it. Since my first pass was down, my second pass is going to go ahead and be up. Again, this is, this is how I do it, not necessarily how you have to do it. We're each going to have our own, our own method here. And that's the nice thing about this too, is rather than working on some kind of system from some manufacturer, you can kind of customize this to your own likes and dislikes. And again, if you're looking, I'm, I'm not repeating strokes. I'm covering facets like a diamond, where you cover the flat parts first. Are you flipping it around so you use both sides? Yes. Every time I rinse, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do a, I will do a flat part, a segment, flip it, do into the next flat part segment, and then rinse. And you'll notice at this point, I am kind of flattening my chin area, just with my facial muscles, to flatten this area. You can also wait till it's loaded up on one side with the lather that you're shaving off before you flip it over. The top, this middle area, particularly the top around the mustache, I'm going to say before I even do this part that you may look like I'm repeating strokes, but I'm really not because since that area is particularly curvy, I'm using very short strokes and manipulating the razor a tiny bit that you probably won't be able to see it from, from there to get those flat portions by themselves. Is that your J-hook technique? No, I will show you J-hook. <laughs> so you're going back and forth with the blades only in contact with your skin for a very short area? Exactly. Okay. That's precisely it. Okay. Okay, another, can I get another? Uh, oh, let's use this one. Are three passes typically three or four? It largely depends on the person. Three is typical. Uh, beginners, I see most, I see a lot of beginners doing four because they'll do a second, either a second first pass with the grain, or they'll do a with grain, across grain, across grain from the other side, and then against grain. Uh, and then from there they can figure out as they shave what they can uh, customize and, and not have to do. But this one is going to be my last, this particular one, and I can feel, as, I, as I'm shaving here, I can actually feel the reduction going on. So my, my last pass here is going to be this will be against my grain, and some people cannot, just cannot shave against the grain. That's okay. Don't do it. You, can, you still look fine. Believe me. You don't want to do any of the advanced techniques like J-hooking until you're finished with your reduction test.
was not explain that. <laughs> you um, you'll mute yourself. <laughs> you talking about Jay hooking? Yeah. Or advanced? I'll, I'll offer you. It's going to be good. Just like huh? <laughs> Yeah, she saw it Thursday. <laughs> what, 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 what did you think when you first saw that? Well, I saw it on, I saw it on your oh, okay. site, and because your yeah. uh, nephew was like, watch this, and he pulls it off, and it's getting turned out here. And we were all looking at it like, that's crazy. The buffing scares me even more, but. How many people have trouble shaving their neck? Okay. I know this doesn't work with Andy, but at least it's something to try. <laughs> most, yeah. most people will, will, just try and stretch their neck like, neck like this to try and get those areas. Instead of doing that, just lean in to your mirror and go like this. Is the neck so hard because the hair grows like in different ways? Yeah, most people, for most people, the neck is their worst part because it, for a lot of people, the hair grows in 17 different directions. <laughs> 